Hi guys, let me talk to you about this course on building a successful startup. This course is designed to provide a step-by-step -step guide right from a stage of idea generation till the startup launch. So I'll briefly introduce myself first. Uh, I'm Jay Sudani. I have done my master's degree M.Tech in uh, mechanical engineering from IIT. Uh, currently, I'm serving as uh, chief executive officer of Parle University Startup and Innovation Center, uh, where my role is more of uh, mentoring startups at an idea stage, helping them in their journey right from an idea to a growth stage, getting them fundings, uh, providing them handholding support, and uh, uh, make sure that they succeed in their journey. Now, in this duration, I have uh, uh, been fortunate to be closely working with around 50 plus startups right from an idea stage, and I've seen their journey very closely. And based on this experience, I thought of starting this course for all you people. So before I move on to this course, I have some very, uh, uh, it's very important for all of you to understand some of the eye-opening statistics uh, that uh, I would like to show it to you. See, under British rule, uh, I think India's share of the world economy declined from 24.4 percentage in the year 1700 down to 4.2 percent in 1950, which means I think there was a time uh, 300 uh, uh, years back or probably wherein India was holding almost one-fourth of the global economy in the world. And by the time British rule ended, it is just remaining 4.2 percentage. Now, why I am sharing the statistics with all of you? Because you need to understand what was India's history. And now, if you want to increase India's uh, economy, world economy, what youngsters has to do? Just giving you the glimpses of global economy. See, currently, India is fifth largest economy in the world. We are proud of that. But I think if you look at the, uh, the distribution of the economy and the number of people residing in the country, I think we have a very long way to go and all our youngsters need to contribute in this segment. It's not just a single political party or a single pol uh, person, leader of this country's responsibility to increase the economy of the country, but each citizen of this country has to make the contribution. I'm just sharing uh, a very, very important uh, index. I hope you are aware about Global Innovation Index. It is a ranking provided uh, globally, worldwide to each of this country based on the amount of innovation happening within the country. Now, when I say innovation, which means based on the amount of uh, uh, innovative products, services, and uh, efforts being made by the country in uh, you know solving problems innovatively, right? So if you see India's ranking, we had worst rank uh, globally which was 81st position in 2015. I'm just comparing China's rank just for a, a comparison purpose. And uh, uh, if you see since then, we have improved a bit. Uh, in 2018, we came down to 57th rank. Uh, do you know what is the current ranking of uh, India in Global Innovation Index? Just give it a guess. Let me share. Today, we are at 48th position based on the latest ranking that we have received uh, in the year 2022. But do you think we should be very proud about this? Because... We are, the, we are the country with highest number of uh, youngsters in the country. I hope you are aware that the India's average or a median age of all the citizen for our country is probably around 27.1 years. Which means for a country who has highest number of its population, the rank is 40th in Global Innovation Index. I think uh, it's our responsibility to improvise on this ranking and make India in top 10 in, in near future. I'll tell you a true story. Uh, there was a guy in Bangalore. He is a second year engineering student. One fine day when he was going to college, he saw one very, uh, you know, uh, an inc incident which inspired him. The incident was a young mother uh, was traveling on an activa with her kid uh, behind, him, behind her. And she anxiously and hurriedly parked her activa on the roadside and took her baby and then uh, handed over to the person in the school bus. And then the, the person helped the baby to take the seat in the school bus. And the mother was very anxious uh, that the baby has taken her seat um, safely or not. And then this engineering, uh, secondary engineering student was observing the entire situation. And it was observed that the young mother was little late and school bus uh, for, you know, for taking her kid into the school bus. And he observed that this young mother was very anxious in that incident, just uh, you know, handing over her kid to the, the bus operator and then ask, uh, making sure that the kid has taken the safe seat. 
it was just one one incident then he he he, th he thought that um, this was the case throughout the day i mean the mother is also anxious about whether the kid would have boarded i mean uh, taken his uh, her, his or her seat into the classroom or not whether the kid would have uh, uh, attended the lectures or not i mean so he thought that there is something to be done can i help the situation he asked himself that can i contribute to the situation and he designed a software which could keep a track of the activities of the uh, the the child the child going to the school right from the time he boards the bus till he comes to the back home home and you see what happened was he designed a software wherein when the when the kid enters the bus the mother gets the message the parents get the messages uh, that your, your child has boarded the bus when the child takes the safe seat the message comes to the mother notification comes to the mother that your child has taken the seat when the boy or girl enters the classroom the message comes to the mobile phone when the boy asks the question to the faculty member or the teacher the message goes to the mother so now the mothers and parents were little feeling little safer because every now and then they are getting a notification of their kids activity and this was implemented in couple of schools in bangalore and then it was becoming famous and it adopted by more than five school in bangalore and it was surprised to observe that uh, one of the software company the big software company in silicon valley noticed this uh, this this kind of software and the algorithm that the boy has developed the engineering student he approached this student by the time the student was in final year because the student did not have a formal company and you know uh, a setup or a network to operate this at a large scale across the globe the the software company approaches this guy and ask him that why don't you sell this entire stuff to us and we will promote it we will network it we will market it and you will pay you uh, one time kind of fees do you know to your surprise the deal that was done was at 65 million us dollars the boy was still in final year of engineering now what i mean to say with this is it's not that difficult for anyone to develop something which is the need of an r see this boy does not invent anything this boy did not done lot of research and invented all together a new uh, system softwares were existing mobile applications were existing sensors proximity sensors were existing sonic sensors were exi existing the what boy did was he observed a problem which was not being addressed and he addressed this problem using the existing technology today most of the startups are doing the same thing if you see more than 95% of the startups today are using the existing technology to solve the unsolved problem and thereby capturing the larger market now this is now the boy did not run startup on his own but he developed something which can then be sold to somebody else and they run the startup or the company so you take any i mean some of the eye opening models that the future companies has established i'm sharing some of those informations with all of you you see today the world's largest media company facebook now it is meta as such uh, it's a world largest media company but meta does not create any of its content on its own apart from the product or you know marketal marketing uh, products or uh, kind of uh, advertisement videos most of their content almost 99.99% of the content is developed by somebody else but still today it's known as one of the largest media company in the world you see world's largest uh, retail company alibaba when you have a retail company conventionally you feel that you need warehouses to store your uh, products and other things because you are a retailer but it's world's largest retail company alibaba but alibaba does not own any of its warehouses you see the innovation in business model today world's largest taxi rental company it's uber globally worldwide but uber does not own any of its taxis now why i'm sharing this statistics with all of you because it's all about how you look at the situation and identify the gap and take an advantage and start working on this solving this problem i'll tell you why i'm sharing all of this with you i think uh, you might have heard our honorable prime minister saying this statement and he repeated this statement many a times he says that i see startups technology and innovation as exciting and effective instruments for india's transformation i'm repeating it again our prime minister says that that i see startups technology and innovation as exciting and effective instruments for india's transformation now there is a reason why he has given a lot of emphasis on startups what can startups do for a country see if i tell you there are top 3 major contribution startups can make for a country i'll list on all of these and i think 
you'll understand this very clearly. The number one contribution it does, it's cre it creates wealth for the country, which means it helps country to expand its horizon on the map of global economy. So as we say, our Honorable Prime Minister has a vision that India should be reaching uh, an economy of 5 trillion US dollars very soon. So the contribution has, the startup can actually contribute in that mission uh, uh, of creating wealth for the country. Second, startup has a very, very high potential of generating employment for the youngsters of the country, particularly for a country like ours, who, which, which has highest number of population by now. We need to create employment for our youth. So this country today needs more of job creators who can create jobs and provide employment opportunities to others and thereby help our country in increasing uh, on making social impact and you know uh, increasing on global map. Third most important contribution startup can do for a country is having innovative solutions to the local problems. See a country has many problems as such on ground. We cannot expect the companies outside India to address the problems that we have locally. Societal problems, many problems we have. Rural India has a different set of problems. Uh, the city area, urban area has a different set of problems. Different category of people has a different set of problems. So with this, startup has an opportunity to identify those problems of the country, which are very local, and solve and give an attempt to solve these problems in an innovative way. I would say that this statement really motivates me a lot that we are not only a country of billion mouths to feed. We are not only a country of billion mouths to feed, but also a country of billion minds to innovate. So I think uh, my motivation for this course is, as I said, you India needs more of job creators and problem solvers. So this mission has to be imbibed for all the higher education institution. And you are seeing that nowadays a lot of emphasis is given. Uh, particularly in higher education institutions on building an entrepreneurship, startups, innovation and other things. I'll tell you, uh, in my, from my experience also, there are many, many students who have this potential to build successful startups and build their own companies right from a stage when they are student. But unfortunately, because of lack of knowledge, they could not give an attempt of building a company or, you know, uh, starting a company and starting a startup. And they end up with uh, taking jobs and then they carry carry forward themselves into that particular area. And meanwhile, they get involved in the societal responsibilities and then the risk taking ability also gets reduced. I'll tell you, today is a time when you have a lot of risk-free funding available to try out your, uh, you know, entrepreneurial uh, kind of, uh, try out your uh, wheel for startup. So that's the reason why I'm building this course, to educate the students about what it takes to start a startup from an idea stage right to a launch stage and build your own company out of it. So this course is designed for, for all those students who are thinking that they are going to build a startup or their own company within, I mean, right now or else in future. I mean, whosoever are thinking that, not now, but if somebody is thinking of starting a startup after three years or four years, they graduate from the university, or after two years of taking experience in the industry, they start a startup. I think this course is for all of those people who at least have that intention to start the startup either now or in future. This will help them to navigate through all the process step by step, right from an idea generation point. I mean, well before the idea gets conceived within the mind of the founders till building a company and launching your, your first product and taking them to the growth stage. So I'll share all those details. I'll tell you what is there in this course, what you will learn at the end of the I mean, There are many students who come up with a lot of questions to me saying that, sir, I have one, these two ideas, which idea should I work on? So I'll tell you, based on my experience with the students, I have designed this course with only intention to educate all of you about what it takes to start a startup in Indian context. So first we'll cover about how to generate the potential startup idea. How do you figure out a very good startup idea and you understand that this idea is good uh, for the market? We'll also go, th in, in this course, we'll also learn about what are different stages of a startup. We'll also learn how to short shortlist and select the right startup idea out of the multiple ideas that you have. Many a time student comes up to me saying, sir, I have these three ideas. What do you think? Which idea should I work on? There is a method to understand that which idea you should pick and start working on. We'll also see how do you validate your startup idea and ensure it has a market demand. We have seen that most of the time people say that startup get failed. But I would say startup is actually failing because of 
launching a product without understanding the market thoroughly or without understanding their user thoroughly. So we will understand a procedure which will help you to understand and validate your startup idea even before you commit yourself or you commit your time or you commit your uh, uh, you know fundings for that. We will also learn how to apply design thinking process to minimize the risk of startup failure. As I said you, if there is a process to that can be deployed in a product development stage itself to minimize the risk of failure and, and that process is called design thinking. So we will learn that in this course. I will also teach you how to build your first product. What mindset should you keep while building your first product and how do you get fundings for that? How do you go about development of a business model? We will also learn how do you prepare investor ready proposals. Now, when you are looking for building a startup right now, it is expected that you do not have fundings for it and you will source fundings from outside. So there is a procedure with the help of which you can design your own funding proposals that can be presented to the investors and investor can put in money in your startup. Right. So we will see how this happens. We will also learn how can you secure funding for your startups and what are different options available mainly from the government sources. So there are a lot of government grants which are non-refundable, you need not to refund the grants to the government. I will share the details with you, what kind of schemes are available. We will also learn what are the legal aspects of a startups and company registration. So what is the process of startup registration? What are different categories of registering a startup? We will see all of those. Which one is important and which one is useful for you? And we will also talk about what are the common mistakes that startup make and how you can avoid those. And finally, we'll talk about how do you launch your startup and penetrate the market and take the journey to the growth. So uh, in a nutshell, I have designed this course from a stage of idea generation to a stage of launching your startup in a very easy language for you to understand all those uh, aspects of uh, building a successful startups. So dear students, uh, let's join our hands and inspire the change and create a better tomorrow for us, for the society, for the country and for the world at large. Thank you so much. I wish if you learn this course, you will really get a lot of insights. And uh, I personally feel that as, as citizens of this country today, our country needs more of uh, entrepreneurs and, and job creators. And it is not that difficult to pursue this uh, passion of building a successful startup or a company on your own. Thereby, you will leave your own passion. Thank you so much. Uh, hope to see you in the next uh, sessions of this course.